Zadrizes bus darīs, kas tev nav. I wouldn't be surprised if the Maesters have an influence in destroying Valyria and then also the, the Faceless Men. And I'm going way sidetracked here, but let me briefly explain the Faceless Men. So the origin of the Faceless Men is that when the Valyrians would mine gold and all of these different things in the caves, they would ultimately uh, have slaves that would fall out and the Valyrians would force them to work. But they would some of them would be in so much pain and so much turmoil that they would rather die, right? It's kind of like the Black Panther thing, right? We have, you know, where he mentioned slaves would rather jump into the ocean than get over to America and, and suffer from that kind of shit, right? So basically what happens is uh, this dude who is sort of higher up and works for the Valyrian slaves, I can't remember, like Arya finds out the origin of this uh, when she makes it down to Bravos and she learns this from the kindly men, right? So the... Uh, the, the, well, the first faceless men basically gave the gift of death to those slaves that wanted it, right? So the faceless men would work, the, the first faceless man would work to ail what the doom and destruction that was caused by the Valyrian freehold by because they would basically have slaves that would mine out what we think is dragon glass and just obviously this is where dragons are discovered so they would just have people working in these really hot disgusting conditions there would also be fireworms these creatures called fireworms there and they could eat through rock and they could just burn them and there would be slaves that would just be suffering from these crazy burns and how hot it is down there so the faceless men were literally against uh, the Valyrian freehold all the way back then and they've obviously been against dragons Dragons, right so there's a faceless man um uh who currently killed this one character who we who's the opening character in the pov uh, the opening pov for uh feast for crows and he's this dude named pate and he's working as an underling uh, an understudy at um the citadel and he uh is tasked with giving this this key stealing this key for who we find out as a faceless man at the end of the pov chapter so basically we find out this dude pate just has this one desire and he wants to meet this girl right and um all he has to do is steal this key so he can get this gold and he can go and buy the girl and they'll sail away off in the sunset well obviously that doesn't happen but he does steal the key he steals the key from this old decrepit maester and that key unlocks every single door at the citadel so what he does is he takes that key and he goes and meets with the faceless man who he doesn't pate doesn't know it's a faceless man right so he gives him the key and then the faceless man gives him the coin and then he takes three steps and then he falls out right and then uh he dies obviously he dies right the pavement comes up and kisses him in the face and then we find out hang on baby hang on bella um and we find out all the way uh at the end when at the end of a feast for crows when sam gets to the citadel that pate is still alive but we know it's a faceless man wearing his face because pate was poisoned and that's how the faceless men operate so they're at the um the citadel currently and the citadel have had communications the high towers because they formed the citadel right so the maesters have had communications with valyria when it was still a freehold and they actually have scrolls that have survived not very many it's rare but they do have scrolls that have survived since then and uh, they have knowledge and information one of the things they probably have is a dragon egg so the faceless men are trying to get dragon eggs it's this whole thing right <laughs> But that's why there's this big high tower conspiracy because the high towers are linked to the Maesters and their Citadel, and we haven't gotten any POV from someone who's directly in the high tower camp. So, you know, the fact that the head of the household of House High Tower hasn't been seen in 300 AC, so in the main books, right? Not in Fire and Blood or in uh, House of the Dragon TV show. Um, this is more so in the main TV show, but they were completely cut out. Their characters were completely cut out. But House High Tower is basically in the shadows working right now, so we're going to find out more probably in Ones of Winter. Um, and then to answer another part of your question, and if you'll hang on a second, I actually have to pull up uh, Patreon to see the last part of that. So the last part of your question to summarize is like what happens with Allison, right? So with Allison, she basically survives the entirety of the Dance with Dragons, the entirety of a House of Dragons. She for sure in canon for the TV show, I'm, I'm positive will survive most of the events, right? She her death may be twisted a little bit her fate may be twisted a little bit it depends on how far they go in the storyline for fire and blood but basically she survives the whole thing and ends up dying in um something known as like the spring fe or no uh the winter fever rather and this is like a few years so like two anywhere from like Ah, uh, no, not two years. It's probably like five years after the dance ends. So in 130 AC, like, I don't know. I'm going to take a wild guess here. 135 AC, right? The year is not important, but she dies during this time. All the while, she's 
go she goes batshit insane like she pulls her hair out anytime people see her she's often crying what we see uh, that's gonna happen to Helena. Uh, we're gonna see Helena for the first time, and the as played by the younger actress in the next episode. But ultimately, Helena watches one of her children die in front of her. All right, I hope you enjoyed that. That's basically a regular video, right? But um, I've recorded a 50-minute podcast. It's audio only, and right now there's only gonna be one of those going up a month. Uh, I'll probably increase it as obviously I get more patrons, but I wanted to edit that small clip as sort of like a teaser for here on YouTube So please if you could slap a like on it And if you enjoyed it if you really enjoyed it consider checking out my patreon You can join it for as little as one dollar and you get to listen to the entire thing It's an audio podcast Obviously if enough people like this video and you guys let me know down below in the comment section I'll try to edit maybe the entire podcast which is 52 minutes So that would take me several days to do that and we also have episode 6 coming up Thank you for watching. Along that, and Zaldrizas was dari exhausted.